Hey guys, in today's video, I'm gonna be giving you my best tips and product recommendations for controlling your scalp psoriasis. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Andrea. I'm a board certified dermatologist. I would love it if you would subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the thumbs up. It really helps my channel out a lot. What is psoriasis? Psoriasis is a chronic inflammatory disease with skin manifestations. It can show up in your scalp, or anywhere else on your body, including your nails. When it comes to scalp psoriasis, it can range in severity. Very mild cases have a very fine scale, maybe diffusely throughout the scalp. More moderate cases of scalp psoriasis, they'll be thicker scale and sometimes more redness. In severe cases, you have very well demarcated large thick plaques of psoriasis with an overlying thick scale. In paler skin tones, these plaques appear red with an overlying white silvery scale. However, in deeper skin tones, these plaques appear purple, brown, or grayish. While the products and tips that I'm gonna be recommending in today's video can help calm down the psoriasis and in some cases clear the psoriasis temporarily, remember, this is a chronic disease, so these are not cures. If you have psoriasis, I strongly, strongly encourage you to see a board certified dermatologist. There are topical medications that can control the disease as well as oral medications like Aprimolas. We can also inject anti-inflammatory medicine into the scalp to calm down the psoriasis, or we can use a eczema laser to also calm it down. But I do realize that it's not always easy to get in to see one. The tips and products I'm gonna be recommending in today's video, they can help a lot. And if you start them now and stay consistent with them, makes it more likely that when you do see a dermatologist, whatever treatments that they recommend um, will have a greater chance of working. Number one is to shampoo your scalp as frequently as you can tolerate. We recommend this for patients with psoriasis because it helps to slough off some of that built up scaly stuff and just kind of stay on top of it. I recognize that not all hair types tolerate shampooing daily. So go based on what your hair type tolerates as frequently as you can. Daily is ideal, but again, as I said, I realize not everyone can do that. It just helps with removing that built up scaly stuff. And if you don't do that, then that builds up and builds up and becomes itchy and you know, it really kind of gets out of control. Number two is to use a salicylic acid shampoo at least a few times a week, if not daily. Salicylic acid is an ingredient that is a keratolytic, meaning it dissolves the glue between those skin cells and helps with the sloughing off of that scale. So it really can help thin out the psoriasis, especially in areas where you have thicker plaques. Over-the-counter salicylic acid shampoos, I'll list some of my favorites down below, but the percentage strength is usually 3%. And the way to use these is to lather them to your scalp and actually leave it on the scalp for 10 minutes while you're in the shower and then rinse it off. That allows it to really go to work breaking up the glue between those scaly cells and allowing them to then slough off. If and when you're able to see a board certified dermatologist, we actually can prescribe salicylic acid for the scalp at a higher percentage strength than what you'll find in the over-the-counter stuff. But the over-the-counter stuff is a very good place to start. And again, if you start it now and stay consistent with it, it will help anything that is prescribed to you get into the psoriasis and start working faster and better. Second product to incorporate into your routine as frequently as you can when it comes to the scalp cleansing is a coal tar shampoo. Neutrogena tea gel, for example. Coal tar sounds really scary, but it's actually anti-inflammatory and anti-proliferative. Part of why you get all of that flaky scaly stuff with psoriasis is that it's a hyper-proliferative skin disorder. And so the coal tar kind of helps put the brakes on that to help normalize things for you. Uh, however, it does smell unpleasant as a word of warning and it can stain in the shower and tub. The way to use it is very similar to the salicylic acid shampoo. Just lather it to the scalp, leave it on while you're in the shower for 10 minutes and then rinse it out. You don't necessarily have to use this every day, but if you wanna incorporate it, say once a week, that can help and it will help thin out those plaques, calm down the inflammation, and because it's calming down the inflammation, it can help with itch quite a bit if you use it consistently. The next product that can really help scalp psoriasis is an anti-dandruff shampoo. Anti-dandruff shampoos with the ingredient zinc pyrithione or selenium sulfide 
can help psoriasis. They are anti-inflammatory, similar to coal tar, and they help in reducing the burden of that little yeast that lives on everyone's skin called malassezia. Malassezia is part of normal human skin flora. I'll say it again, it's part of normal human skin flora. You don't wanna eradicate it, but in people with psoriasis and people with dandruff, their immune system sometimes gets annoyed with the malassezia, especially if it is too abundant. So these ingredients kind of help reduce that yeast amount and therefore have an anti-inflammatory effect, which can benefit the psoriasis in the long term as well as dandruff. For those of you all out there with a hair type that does not tolerate using a shampoo on a daily basis, I hear you. Another thing that you could do to stay on top of that scaly buildup is to get yourself some mineral oil. Mineral oil is uh, wonderful. It's not a demon ingredient. I know people are terrified of it, but it's very, very safe and it's inert. Unlike many natural oils, it's not gonna go rancid. You can find it actually in the drugstore over in the laxative section. The way to use the mineral oil is just massage it into the scalp, especially the areas where you have a lot of scale, and put on a shower cap and stay that way for, you know, hang out that way for 20 minutes and then get into the shower and rinse out the mineral oil. If you do not like the idea of using mineral oil, another alternative to use similarly is coconut oil. Coconut oil is, uh, will help soften and break up some of that scale, allow it to slough off, and it also has compounds in it that are anti-inflammatory, so that may benefit the psoriasis. The other nice thing about coconut oil is that for your hair, it can reduce high growth fatigue. The uh, oil can actually help uh, in reducing frizz long-term on your hair. So it has benefits to the hair strand as well. A word of warning though, many people do find that they experience acne breakouts when using products with coconut oil or just straight coconut oil. So be mindful of that, especially if you have acne prone skin. But here we're just putting it on the scalp and then rinsing it out later. So it shouldn't be a problem, but if you're sensitive, you know, be aware and use mineral oil instead. Beyond shampooing consistently and using these specific ingredients in your scalp cleansing routine, do not pick or scratch at the psoriasis. I know the temptation can be quite strong. But what you have to understand about psoriasis is that anything that causes trauma or injury to the skin will elicit more psoriasis. This is referred to as the Kebner phenomenon. And so scratching, picking, those scalp massaging brushes, that actually can rev up your psoriasis quite a bit. So just, you know, anytime you're applying things to the scalp, just use very gentle circular motion with your finger pads. Don't pick, scratch, um, or, you know, dry brush your scalp. You know, I'm sure you want to pick and peel, but really what you're doing is you're just beckoning more psoriasis and more additional scale to come about when you do that. Next tip, gentle hair styles. You guys, very gentle hair styles. You don't want to use, if you, if you use a blow dryer, make sure you use it on the coolest setting and make sure that you're constantly moving it around. You don't leave it on one spot of the scalp too long. No curling irons or flat irons, and don't use any um, uh, perms or uh, relaxers because these things can be very irritating on the scalp. Anything that's going to cause irritation or inflammation to the scalp will drive further psoriasis lesions and more stubborn psoriasis. So be very gentle. No wearing tight ponytails, that tight traction of the ponytail or a tight braid puts a lot of stress and strain on your scalp. Not only does this lead to traction alopecia, another topic that I have a video on, by the way, uh, but it puts, because it puts so much stress on your scalp, causes inflammation, irritation, further eliciting more psoriasis to come out. So very, very loose hairstyles. If you're looking for a way to style your hair to camouflage the psoriasis, I would recommend that you wear a low, loose ponytail if you have long hair. And you can actually um, tease the hair a little bit with a comb in the front and you know, kind of comb it over to camouflage the scalp a little bit as opposed to like doing hot rollers or something like that, that you know creates volume, but also puts a lot of heat and, and stress on your scalp. 
Uh, so that's a tip. If your psoriasis tends to come out along your hairline, consider bangs as another way to camouflage it. And then last, but certainly not least, actually probably the most important thing is your lifestyle habits. With psoriasis, one thing you have to understand about this disease is it is a disease, a systemic disease. It affects your entire body and it happens to have these skin manifestations. Uh, you know, the scaly stuff in the scalp, uh, and if you have it on your body, it can come there obviously, but first and foremost, it is an inflammatory systemic disease. People with psoriasis are more likely and often have comorbid uh, difficulties with weight management. They're more likely to be overweight, obese, and that puts them at higher risk for long-term chronic diseases like cardiovascular disease. And when you're overweight, unfortunately, it does generate a lot more inflammation in the body that further drives the psoriasis. We don't know if people with psoriasis, because of their psoriasis, they're more likely to be overweight and have difficulty managing their weight, but they do go hand in hand. And then that subsequently leads to a greater risk of not only heart disease, but also diabetes. Um, so, you know, you don't have to go on some sort of you know, body transformation. If you do happen to have weight management issues, just make some simple changes in your diet. Just shedding a few unnecessary pounds can really help a lot. Uh, whether it be from walking a little bit more, swapping out soda for water, very, very, very minimal changes can yield tremendous benefit, not only to your overall health, but obviously to the skin. So weight is very important for psoriasis and when you are able to get in to see a dermatologist, that's gonna make it so that any medications they prescribe will work better uh, or more likely to work. When it comes to your diet, I strongly suggest an anti-inflammatory diet. <laughs> that's so nebulous. But what I mean by that is make sure that you're getting fruits and vegetables into your diet. Uh, these are rich in antioxidants that can kind of help in reducing some of that burden of total body inflammation that drives the skin disease, as well as some of these other health problems. Sleep is of tremendous benefit to psoriasis. Poor sleep drives more inflammation in the body. When you don't get adequate sleep at night, your levels of inflammation are much higher. Somebody with psoriasis already has a high level of body inflammation. So one night, two nights of poor sleep adds to that. It's gonna show up in your scalp, rest you know other skin lesions and it's just not good for your health so try and incorporate some habits for sleep hygiene i've got videos on this so definitely check those out it is so important more so than any shampoo getting good control of your sleep uh, will will help a lot it also will help with weight management if you're also struggling with that just to improve your sleep less inflammation in the body makes it easier to drop a few pounds that then can even help even further so you see how these small changes can really start to add up next lifestyle tip is stress management so important so important very challenging to give advice on that everyone has different things that stress them out and different ways of handling it there are healthy ways to handle stress and there are unhealthy ways to handle stress for me personally i enjoy exercising i find that's a big stress relief for me but other things that you can consider are crafts hobbies make sure you're making time for these things. So I can't tell you what to do for stress management. It's going to depend, it's gonna be up to you. And it's up to you to be accountable to incorporate self-care on a daily basis. That is key for managing your stress. It doesn't have to be this complex yoga retreat every day, but something will make a huge difference in the psoriasis. I'm telling you guys, as I always say, lifestyle factors go a long way. Okay, last but not least, when it comes to the lifestyle factors, this is probably, I don't know. I mean, this is actually what motivates me to talk about psoriasis the most, because I know you guys are really struggling. I already told you all that people with psoriasis, they're more likely to have these other comorbid chronic diseases. The other thing people with psoriasis are very likely to have is some comorbid mental health struggle whether it be depression, anxiety, bipolar disorder, substance use or abuse disorder, people with psoriasis are much more likely to abuse alcohol, drugs, and smoke tobacco. 
Alcohol, drugs, tobacco dump more inflammation into the body, which further aggravates the psoriasis and all the chronic medical issues associated with it. So if you are struggling with your mental health, please, please, please seek professional help. Um, you know, don't, don't just rely on internet forums to get you by. Seek professional help. Of course, those things can be helpful for support, but seek professional help. Excessive alcohol really drives a lot of inflammation in the body, creates, you know, it's a setup for lots of chronic diseases. You already have a chronic disease with psoriasis. That's just gonna make it much worse. Even if you don't think that you're drinking too much, if you if you have the thought like, hmm, maybe I could cut back, talk to your primary care doctor. Honestly, they can give you the best resources for this. Just have a conversation with them. It doesn't matter. You don't have to be drinking a certain amount to benefit from, from these interventions. Nobody's gonna say, oh no, you don't drink enough, or you don't smoke enough, or you don't do enough drugs. Yeah, this video took a turn from anti-dandruff shampoos all the way to drugs and alcohol, but hey, it's a day with Dr. Dre. That's what we do here. We cover everything, and with anything in the skin, it's always, always, always gonna come down to the lifestyle factors making the biggest difference. Psoriasis is a disease that patients feel incredibly frustrated and defeated by. But listen, everything I just told you, these are things that you can take ownership of. Make very, very small changes. Start somewhere. You can do it. You can, you can make these changes in your life, in your habits, and that is going to bode so well for your skin disease and your overall health. And you can, these are things that you can do even without the help of a dermatologist. Of course, medications may still be needed, but they're more likely to work if you have done these things. This, this is something you can do, control you can have, and that alone can give you a sense of calm. Having, having a skin condition like psoriasis is incredibly distressing and anxiety provoking. So making a small change, perhaps that can actually give you some peace of mind at night to quiet your mind a little bit, get some better sleep, and then boom, you see how these things, they start to really build on one another? I know a lot of you guys at baseline suffer with psoriasis, but this year in particular, you know, this past year with everything going on, everybody is stressed to the nines. And I know that for those of you with psoriasis, my heart goes out to you. Um, I, know it's, I know it's a challenging time. Uh, I hope this video is helpful for you all. I do have some other psoriasis videos. They're older, but they are still relevant. So if you're interested in those, definitely check them out. And if you would like more content about psoriasis, let me know what kind of topics and videos that you would like to see. And I would be happy to begin to put those together for you all. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.